I thought I would take a few moments and um, uh, fill in my colleagues about a meeting that I just returned from in Karuna, Sweden. This was the Arctic Council ministerial meeting. And the Arctic Council is comprised of the eight Arctic nations, of which the United States is one by virtue of the state of Alaska, but not, not, to, not to diminish the fact that we truly are an Arctic nation. And our role as such, uh, involved with other Arctic neighbors, is, is a growing role and a role that the rest of the world is looking at uh, with great interest and great anticipation as to how the United States is going to step forward in, into this important arena. This is the second Arctic Council meeting that I have attended. Uh, I was in Nook, Greenland with Secretary Clinton and Secretary Salazar um, two years ago. That was the first time that the United States had sent a cabinet member sent the Secretary of State to the Arctic Council, and it caused great waves throughout the Arctic world and certainly gained the attention of, of nations around the world. And the, the thought was, or the sentiment was, the United States is finally stepping up. The United States is, is, is moving forward, recognizing its role as an Arctic nation. So it was exceedingly important that Secretary Kerry continued that good work of Secretary Clinton in leading uh, the US in its role at this ministerial meeting. And, and I will tell you, uh, Secretary um, Kerry has been very involved here in this body as a senator in his leadership on certain issues, specifically advancing the Law of the Sea Treaty, ratification of that important treaty. Uh, speaking out and, and being very forthright on the issue of climate change. His leadership at the, at the council meeting in Karuna yesterday uh, was clearly evidenced as he worked to bring the parties together in, in, uh, in terms of an agreement to move forward with how we treat observers to the Arctic, Arctic Council. So I commend Secretary Kerry for his leadership, uh, certainly for his initiative in, in ensuring that the United States continues to have a, a, a high profile and a growing profile. So why is this important? Why do we need to not only be engaged, but to step up that engagement? Well, yesterday, the chairmanship of the Arctic Council transferred from Sweden to Canada. So our neighbors to the north will chair the Arctic Council for these next two years. In 2015, the gavel of that chairmanship will pass from Canada to the United States. So we will be working to set the, the agenda, although it's a very consensus-driven uh, process. But we will, we will clearly be in, in a leadership role amongst the eight Arctic nations and those observer nations. So it's critically important that we're ready, that we be working towards uh, assuming this leadership position. And in, and in doing that, it's more than just attending meetings every other year. It is, it's the agreements that, that come out as a result of these ministerials, uh, these consensus initiatives that really help to, to advance, um, advance the dynamic in a, an evolving part of the world. In, in Nook, the first ever a binding agreement of the, of the parties was entered into, and this was a search and rescue uh, agreement. If there is an incident up in the Arctic, and the, the, the world up there knows, knows very little in terms of, of boundaries and what happens with ice, but we recognize our infrastructure is, is severely limited. So who is in charge? How do we work cooperatively, collaboratively with search and rescue? So it was an exceedingly important initiative that was adopted two years ago. Yesterday in Kiruna, it was the adoption of the cooperation on marine oil pollution preparedness and response in the Arctic. There is a recognition that in, in the Arctic where some 15% of, of the world's um, known oil and gas reserves are, are situated, that there will be activity. 
Uh, we're seeing it in, in, uh, in Russia to, to our left-hand side. We're seeing it in Canada to our right-hand side. Uh, in the United States, as we all know, Shell attempted their first ever, oh, excuse me, they attempted to uh, begin exploration this year. There have been previous exploration efforts up in the Beaufort and in the Chukchi. Um, whether, whether you are for or against oil development here in this country, the recognition is that within the Arctic nations, there is activity. There is ongoing efforts, whether it's through exploration or, or hopefully production, that will move forward. So what we're trying to do within the Arctic Council and, and other entities is make sure that when that happens, we're prepared. So we're putting forward collaboration and, and collective agreements so that there's an understanding that in the event, hopefully a very, very unlikely event, something that would never happen, that there is an understanding as to how all the nations act, the level of, of preparation that moves forward. So incredibly important initiatives as, as, we, uh, as we deal with an evolving Arctic. And think about, think about the world up north there. And really understand what is happening. This is no longer an area that is locked in ice and snow, an area where we are not able to transit, an area where there is no human activity. The, the Arctic has, has seen clearly an opening uh, as we see the sea ice receding. We're seeing a level of activity that is, is unprecedented. It is, it's truly the last frontier, a new frontier, so to speak. And uh, again, how we prepare for a world where there is more movement, where there is more activity. Is going to be uh, is going to be a critical, a critical key to uh, to the success and and the opportunities. We we recognize that the volume of shipping that we are seeing now coming through the Northwest Passage, coming from from Russia on down through the Bering Straits, through very narrow channels there, uh, out to Asia, down to uh, to the to the, into the Pacific. There's, there's incredible movement. So how are we preparing ourselves for an increased volume of shipping traffic? Do we have the navigational aids that we need? Do we have the, the, the ports and the infrastructure that will be necessary? These are some of the initiatives that, that were discussed. Uh, obviously, when we, when we think about a, an Arctic that is changing, key focus on, on climate change and what is happening. We're seeing the impact of climate change in the Arctic more noticeably than in other parts uh, of the globe. And so there's a great deal of, of science and research that is going on that's necessary. How we collaborate, how we share that with all of our other uh, uh, um, Arctic neighbors is going to be key. How we map our resources, whether it's understanding the, 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 the seafloor, whether it's understanding the coastline. This is an area, again, that we use the term frontier. And when, when we go out into a new frontier, it's important to know what it is that we're dealing with. So how we can be working cooperatively on things such as, as mapping. What we can be doing, again, to ensure that as we see changes, as we see development, as we see increased economic activity in the Arctic, that the indigenous peoples, the peoples that have been there for thousands of years, living a, a true subsistence lifestyle, that their lifestyle remains intact, that there can be a balance and a harmony with, with their world and this, this changing, um, this changing scenery and landscape in front of them. Uh, a story that was conveyed to me several years ago, I was up in Barrow, which of course is the northernmost city in the United States. And Barrow is a, is a relatively small uh, community, several thousand uh, individuals. One afternoon, there's a group of folks that are in town and they're all speaking German. 
somebody asked, well, how did you get here? Where, where'd you come from? They didn't see that many people getting off the Alaska Airlines jet. And the, the German tourists pointed to a cruise ship that was, that was offshore. They had lightered these, these German tourists into the community. A cruise ship in these waters just a few years back was unheard of. What we're seeing now are, are cruises. We've got a level of tourism that, that you would never have anticipated. So uh, again, how we, how we prepare for all of this is, is a challenge for us. So the work of the Arctic Council, again, focusing on collaboration and cooperation in an area, in a zone of peace, as, as many would suggest. This is, this is an important opportunity for us from a, from a diplomacy perspective. Think about how many hot spots we have in the world, how many, how many parts of, of this, this planet. We're, we're trying to, to put out fires that have been simmering or smoldering for, for, for decades, for generations, for some millennia. If we've got a part of the world where we can be working together, what kind of a message, what kind of a symbol does that, does that really represent? So we've got some enormous opportunities within the Arctic. I'll tell you, part of my challenge, and I shared this with, uh, with Secretary Kerry, is, is impressing upon people in this country that we are an Arctic nation. Madam President, you hail from the state of Massachusetts. My colleague and, and chairman of the Energy Committee uh, comes out of Oregon. I would, I would venture to say that most of your constituents don't view themselves as, as people of the Arctic. But we are. As, as, as 50 states, we are. And so how we, how we work together to make sure that America's role as an Arctic nation is, is represented, is key. I'll conclude my, my remarks by noting that just on Friday, the White House released its Arctic strategy. And this is a document to, to advance national security interests, how we responsibly manage the Arctic ecosystem, how we bolter, bolster international relationships, all very worthwhile goals. I think we recognize that it's perhaps a little bit light on details, but the good news is, is that so many of our federal agencies are working to, to help advance these goals. What, what we need, in addition to a coordinated strategy, is a policy that's really going to, to make sense from all the different levels, whether it is it's, it's how we deal with the energy, how we deal with the human side, how we deal with the security aspect of it. These are complicated issues. But again, it's an opportunity that is almost unprecedented to be able to take a, a, a blank page here and be able to create opportunities, be able to create policies that uh, really began with a level of, of collaboration and cooperation. This is what we're hoping to build, not only, not only with our, our Arctic neighbors, um, but really beyond that. It was interesting to note the, uh, the, the recognition of six nations to join as observers, China, India, Italy, Japan, Singapore, and South Korea. Now, no one would ever suggest that these are Arctic nations, but the reason they want to be engaged as observers is they recognize the importance of the Arctic to the rest of the globe. They recognize the importance, whether from a, from a shipping perspective, whether from an environmental perspective, whether from uh, uh, just an opportunity for, for resource. There is a, a keen awareness that what is happening in the Arctic is, is the place, this is the place to be right now. So my, my urging to my colleagues is to pay attention. 
to not only what is happening in the Arctic, but pay attention to how an increased role in the Arctic impacts you and your constituents in your state. Because whether it's sending, sending goods from one nation to another, this is an opportunity to, 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 uh, to allow for transit and commerce that it's only been a dream. Whether it's how we uh, access our, our energy resources, again, in a way that uh, is, is done responsibly, safe, and with an eye towards environmental stewardship. There are, there are opportunities for us, challenges, yes, but opportunities for us as well. So I, you will hear me talking much more about our role as an Arctic nation, our responsibilities as an Arctic nation. But I would just ask that you start thinking about where does Massachusetts, where does Oregon, where do you fit in as part of an Arctic nation? With that, Madam President, uh, I thank you and uh, I yield the floor.